I'm Miss Ball and today I have a video for you about doodling. First we'll take a look at some doodles made by famous artists and then I'll show you some techniques that you can use to make doodles of your own. For this project all you'll need is um, something you can write with and a scrap of paper or any anything you can write on. All right let's get started. This doodle is by the avant-garde artist Yayoi Kusama. She made this with marker. This is a print of a doodle made by Klaus Oldenburg. Klaus Oldenburg made four very large sculptures in Philadelphia. Pablo Picasso made this doodle with colored pencil. You could buy it for $350. This doodle, titled Beastie, is made by Alexander Calder, and you can see his initials on the top right corner. Calder is known for his mobiles and sculptures. Collage artist Romare Bearden made this quick doodle of a cat, which is now part of the collection at the Smithsonian. This sketchbook page full of complicated and interesting doodles was made by the surrealist artist Salvador Dali. I'm going to start by showing you a few different things that you can use to make your doodle. The first thing I'm going to show you is the pencil I'm holding in my hand right now. A nice thing about using a pencil is making both dark marks and light marks depending on how hard you push. You can also doodle with colored pencil if you want something a little bit more colorful. The next one is a ballpoint pen. If you look closely at the end you can see a little ball that allows the ink to come out. Ballpoint pens are nice for smooth, fluid marks. Normally ballpoint pens are blue or black but you can find them in other colors too. This is a drawing pen that comes in a set of pens with different thicknesses. This is a calligraphy pen and it has a flat edge so it's good for doing lettering or writing. Both of these pens are waterproof so you could paint on top of them and they're great for little tiny details. They're called drawing pens, fine line pens, liner pens, or technical pens. So they have a lot of different names. The calligraphy pen has a flat edge. Next I'm going to show you some dip pens. These are called dip pens because you dip them in ink or liquid watercolor. This is the nib of the pen, and it's a piece of metal that has a little split in the middle, and that's what holds the ink. This pen is called a quill tip pen, and it makes really fine lines, and you can draw until you run out of ink. This pen is like the quill tip pen, but it's made from bamboo. The ink comes out a little bit thicker at first, but as it runs out of ink, the line gets thinner. This is called a bamboo reed Ooh, I'm running out of ink. Read pen. This is the last dip pen I'm going to show you. And like the quill tip pen, it's also metal and has a little split in the middle. This one is called a crow quill pen. Because this line is so thin, it's good for little tiny details. The last thing I'm going to show you is a marker. This is a skinny marker and it's nice if you want to add some color and usually markers come in a lot of different colors too. What I'm showing you now is a fun little challenge to see how many different types of marks you can make. So I'm going to fill each one of these boxes with a different mark. This first one is a series of straight lines and this mark is called hatching. If you take those straight marks and make them again, but this time cross over them, so you're making a bunch of little crisscross marks, this is called cross hatching. These little tiny dots take a very long time. This is called stippling. You can do a lot of interesting drawings with lines like this. These are wavy lines. This is a controlled scribble. This type of mark is called scumbling. When most people first start to draw, they draw a little bit like this, and we call this scribbling. Scribbling is uncontrolled and couldn't fit into a little box. If your drawings look like scribbling, that's okay. They can still be really interesting and it's good practice. When you get more control over your hand, you can make this line that kind of looks like a cursive E. I call these loopy lines. Here I'm making alternating vertical and horizontal hatching marks. It looks sort of like a basket, but there are many different ways you can make a pattern. These marks are called dashes. 
and these marks are zigzags. This type of mark could be great for fish or flower petals. This mark is called scales. A lot of people make spirals when they doodle, and you can even overlap them. These are called contour lines. Contour lines trace over and over around a form. These lines are like contour lines because they go around a form, but also cross through the form to show that it has dimension. These are cross contour lines. If you want to create a drawing or doodle with shading, a pencil is gonna be the fastest way to do that. And you can hold the pencil sideways to create shading or a tonal drawing. Your eraser can be very useful for mark making. So think about your eraser as a tool, not just something to fix a mistake. Another thing you can do with a graphite pencil is create a dark mark and then smudge it with your finger. This creates kind of a smooth surface and you can go back and erase later if you want to make some marks in that. Usually you have to wash your hands after smudging. Doodles are not as precious as regular drawings and you can do them pretty much anywhere. Here you can see me doodling on the back of a paper napkin. I'm using black and red ballpoint pens. This drawing I'm doing with a graphite pencil on an old envelope I got in the mail. I didn't need the envelope, so I thought I'd create a doodle on the back. When you make a doodle, you don't plan ahead. You just make whatever kind of mark you feel like making in that moment. A lot of people will doodle while they're talking on the phone or listening to something and this way your mind isn't totally focused on what you're making. It's fun to see how the doodle will come out, but the most important thing isn't the finished product, but the actual act of mark making. When you're doodling, it's okay if your mind wanders. It's kind of like a daydream. Doodling can be very relaxing. And since there's no worry about the finished outcome, you can just enjoy the process of making. So you can doodle on the back of an envelope or a paper napkin or a scrap of paper. My favorite place to do my doodling is in my sketchbook. And then I have all my doodles saved in one place. Here you can see me doodling with my art pens and I'm doing some cross contour lines to make the spiral kind of look like a snail shell. I'm doing some hatching lines here and some scales. In my doodles, I like to do lots of different types of mark making because it makes it more fun for me. Some people might only want to doodle with one type of mark and that's okay too. I like to make a lot of hatching marks when I draw or doodle. Here I'm using some loopy lines to connect the two sides of my sketchbook and the two parts of my drawing. In this doodle, I have a lot of organic shapes so I thought I would make some geometric shapes too, like squares and rectangles. Now I'm adding a little bit of color with some colored markers. As you can see, I really like to fill up the whole page when I create a doodle. This doodle is mostly abstract. Abstract art does not try to look like something realistic. Things that are abstract might remind you of things that you recognize. You might see something in my doodle that reminds you of a snail or a flower or a city, but they don't look very realistic. A doodle could just be marks or you could draw things that are representational that look like something else. This is a doodle that is totally abstract. This doodle is not abstract, it's representational because I'm drawing cats. And it's still a doodle because I'm not erasing and I didn't really make a plan. This is one of my favorite doodles to do. And I start by making kind of funny squiggly little shapes. I'm gonna make four of these. And then I'm going to go back around them with contour lines. And I'll trace carefully around each one of the shapes. I try not to let the lines touch, but if they do, that's okay. Right here, my lines touched. So I'm gonna have them connect back together there. And each time I go around, I'll have them connect. And that'll kind of create a dark spot. With this type of doodling, I'm just making one shape over and over. And I have fun when the shapes start to touch each other. This type of drawing is abstract, but it really reminds me of topographical maps that show how high certain landforms are. 
The last thing I'm going to show is how to make a doodle that has overlapping parts. When I say overlapping, it means that some parts of the drawing look like they're in front of other parts. I started this drawing by making these kind of long oval shapes right on top of each other. And then I'll go back in with my eraser and I'll start to erase some of the lines so these shapes look like they're overlapping. I'm trying to make these shapes look like something woven. Something woven will have pieces that go over, under, over, under. Right here I want the vertical piece to look like it's going over, so I'm going to make these two parallel lines on these parts, because those are the parts that are going over, and the horizontal lines here are parts that are going to go over. Now I'm erasing the parts that are underneath. To make my doodle stand out and look a little bit more dimensional, I'm going to outline some of the shapes I've made, and also I'm going to go in and put in some shading, and I'll put the shading next to or behind the overlap. This shading makes the things that are in front stand out. With my shading, I try to go right up to the edge of the line. The shadows that are next to the line are the darkest, and as the shape goes over, it gets lighter. You can do something similar with a curvy line. So here I drew a curvy line, and then I went back in to decide which parts were going to be going over and which parts under. Then I used some shading to make it look more dimensional. Here is my finished doodle with many overlapping shapes. I used marker and pencil. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video on doodling and you have some ideas for doodles you might do at home. If you do this project or any of the other projects, please email me because I would love to see your work. Take care. Bye-bye.